Today, I want to talk about Oklahoma versus West Virginia canceled. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner shit. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about Oklahoma versus West Virginia being canceled. This is due to an outbreak of COVID-19 quarantine and protocol and positives for West Virginia. They were looking forward to this game as much as anybody else. This was going to be their senior day. Now their senior day has basically been wiped away from them. Not unlike the University of Tulsa's senior day has been wiped away from them. And this also is a growing trend among the Power Five conferences in which we've seen these COVID-19 cancellations have effectively become buys as Oklahoma is going to play against Iowa State as the away team in the Big 12 championship game on December 19th. Now for Oklahoma, you wanted this game as much as West Virginia did because you just haven't played a bunch of football since Bedlam. Matter of fact, it's just one game since that game was played. And it was one in which we saw the defense really show out. Guys like DJ Graham stepping up in a meaningful way. Isaiah Thomas is having a big 12 defensive player of the year kind of season. Ronnie Perkins has been a monster off the edge. Ramondre Stevenson, with the exception of Baylor, has been really a welcome addition to that backfield. And you wanted to see Spencer Rattler look a little bit better against Baylor and have an opportunity to look better going into the Iowa State game because as Lincoln Riley said earlier in this week in his press conference, we need to play games to get better. And they wanted to try to make this game happen. They did everything they could to make the game against Baylor happen and they were able to give their kids something like a senior day. But now what it means is going straight into Iowa State versus Oklahoma. Iowa State probably has the most to gain out of this. The Sooners could get into a New Year's Six Bowl with a win and get it their sixth straight conference championship. That's six in six years. Texas has three in 24, which is ridiculous, man. I need to say more about that later. But I don't necessarily think that there's anything else you can do if you're Oklahoma right now except try to enjoy these practices, try to enjoy that game next week, try to win it, and try to play in a bowl game because – this season has been fits and starts, and I'm amazed that we got this far through it before we saw even more outcomes that were, well, canceled, right? Like West Virginia doesn't catch an L to Oklahoma this year, and Michigan doesn't catch an L to Ohio State this year. And that's another thing. Notre Dame and Clemson effectively got a bye from the ACC to play in the conference title game next week as well as Miami versus North Carolina is becoming a de facto play-in game for the Orange Bowl as we expect Notre Dame and Clemson to be in the playoff, especially if Clemson manages to beat Notre Dame. Knocking out Clemson, that might have something to say about who wins that game in North Carolina and Miami because they might be the odd team out. You're also looking around at the Pac-12 who is trying to eat toward the end of their season and you might end up with a USC versus a Washington where you've seen a total of four or five games played between undefeated opponents. I know that Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson are headed out to the Colorado game, and that ought to be interesting because Colorado's undefeated, low-key. like to see what Carl Durrell is doing over there, and we'll, I'll have an opportunity to watch that now because the two teams that I'm most likely to watch on Saturday at 11 a.m., neither has a game, Ohio State and Oklahoma. I'm used to having like three screens up trying to keep track of everything that's going on. But I also think that really this was an opportunity to try to get Marvin Mims a little bit more consideration for the Bolitnikoff Award going into next year because I think he's going to be circled on a lot of people's list going into the All-American preseason team. He's had an outstanding season. I think he's going to be a All-American USA Today or ESPN freshman All-American this year. And you want to see that defensive back group get to keep playing together because they've been playing outstanding football basically since – the end of the Texas game where Trey Brown had an interception to seal it. Now, for West Virginia, it also sucks because now they're just going to go into a bowl season and they hope they get to play against an opponent. They hope that opponent is worthwhile. And again, if you're one of these middle-tier teams, Texas, Texas Christian, Oklahoma State, there's not a whole hell of a lot you get to do now, and it's just kind of going out with a fizzle as all the attention is going to be turned to the conference championship games. I also need to add to that list Cincinnati and Tulsa. I mentioned that Tulsa 
had its senior day taken away from it by the American after Cincinnati claimed COVID-19 concerns. And then Brett McMurphy tweeted out a potential list for how the American would assign bowls in this bowl season. And they have Cincinnati headed to a New Year's Six Bowl, which feels like shade to Tulsa. And I would take it as shade to Tulsa because it, it feels squirrely. You moved that game a couple of times already because of Cincy having COVID. And you've also seen Tulsa get beat by one team, and that's Oklahoma State. The same Oklahoma State team that managed to beat Iowa State and Texas. And that was a Tulsa team that did not look like the kind that we're used to seeing the rest of the way, although that defense has been outstanding. And I think that Gillespie would be my pick for the Broyles Award this year. What he has done with that defensive back group is amazing. Allie Green is a semifinalist for the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award. Reggie Robinson was outstanding last year. And then added that Jackson player who is basically a smaller version of Aaron Donald playing at the five and at the nose. They're making that 3-3-5 work. He's got these big, long dudes that can come down and flip nines and rush off the edge. He's got outstanding play from the safeties. I'm excited to see what Tulsa can do in the American Championship game. Also means that game's going to be played at Cincy which feels like shade because if Tulsa were able to win that game this Saturday had it been played, the American Championship game would also be played in Tulsa because they would have had the head-to-head and they would have been playing for conference supremacy in the universe, in Tulsa, in the city of Tulsa, like at Chapman Stadium, at Skelly Field, which means that maybe game day would consider it, but if they're not going to consider it this week, then they probably won't consider it in a week where you got – Notre Dame Clemson playing it in Charlotte, which I feel like is going to be the game. You have Ohio State Northwestern. That's going to be a really interesting game because we're going to watch Ohio State come off of a week again where they've had to miss playing in a game that actually matters. And I don't know that's going to I don't know that's going going to affect them that much because they play with a bunch of guys out of position and or backups in the game against Michigan State. So if anything, you were able to increase your depth. And I think that Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten Championship, and that's a big deal because one of the criteria for the playoff committee to consider is did you win your conference championship game? And there was a lot of talk about whether or not Ohio State would be considered if they didn't win the conference championship game, and a point that has been made. But I'm going to make it again. Indiana lost to Ohio State. Had they beaten Ohio State, they would have been the Big Ten's best opportunity to make the playoff, and I think they would have gone to the Big Ten title game had they lost two games due to COVID, one of which was their fault, right? Now, also in there is Ohio State and Michigan this weekend, which is basically for all of us, and go to foxsports.com. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a link in the description below to about 3,000 words I wrote about the game being canceled. Um, Got to talk with Urban Meyer for a little bit about his two favorite memories of Ohio State and Michigan as a coach. Some really cool stories about Jim Harbaugh and a little bit of history to round it out for folks, even talking a little bit about the gold pants. I think it's a good piece. I'm, I'm very proud of it, and I really wish you would take a look at it. But if Michigan were to win that game in a dramatic upset where they're a 30-point dog, Ohio State still is the Big Ten East champion. It's just that they would not probably be considered for the college football playoff spot. And then it's all moot, right, because the Big Ten would basically be in the same spot that o- uh, the Oklahoma and Iowa State are, in the Big 12 championship. All right, that's it for me. Doses.